So I'm not sure how to introduce our guest speaker this morning. Um, I was thinking he's a better hunter than I am. He's, he's a, um, a more experienced EMT than I am. So I would like to introduce the second best preacher I know. Um, if Tim Bennett could come. I love you, brother. Wow. I don't think I've ever received an intro like that before. So thank, I love this guy. thank you. I, I don't know. Thank you. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. It is so good to be back with you this, uh, this morning here at Hamlin Assembly of God. We're blessed to be with you. Hope you have your Bibles with you. If not, uh, you know, there's a lot of free apps. You can look on your phone, the YouVersion Bible app. I know I use a lot, uh, uh, but uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 is where we're going to go this morning. And uh, really, I'm just, I'm thankful. I told my wife this morning, I, I, I've had a message that I've wanted to preach to you, but at this morning I told my wife, I'm like, honey, I'm just not sure exactly. I kind of had another one on the side burner, like, okay, God, like, is this where you're going or not? And then your worship this morning just confirmed everything for me. So thank you so much, whoever. I know who ultimately put that together, but whoever the human is the conduit in between here and there, I appreciate you very much as well. Uh, but I'm excited for what the Lord has for us. I want to say thank you to Pastor Ken for the invite to be here with you guys this morning. We love, love getting to be a hanging around with these guys uh we've <laughs> I, I told him on the phone the other day it's probably a good reason why god put us at opposite ends of the state so uh, uh yeah but uh yeah i won't even go into details but we're blessed. Uh, my wife and I, we, the next month we'll be married for 19 years. We have four beautiful kids at home. My oldest daughter just got her driver's license uh, this year, which they really, I don't know if you know this or not, like they don't have to do anything anymore. It, it's shocking, like shocking. You know, sure, she had her permit, but did not have her actual license, right? And then uh, with all the COVID things happening, you know, that kept getting, you know, canceled and all that. And so finally, we were able to have the in-person driving test, but it's actually not an in-person driving test anymore. I don't know if you know this. Like, we, we drive up to the driving center. A guy walks out wearing a hazmat suit, you know, and, and he, bring, he brings an iPad, sticks an iPad in there. You sign your little name. I sat in the car with my daughter, and he goes, all right, drive around this parking lot and then come back here. And that's what she did. And he goes, okay, now you have a driver's license. So doesn't that make you feel safer, right? That's true life. I cannot believe that's what they're doing. But hey, God bless them. I hope you're all scared. So, <laughs> so my daughter and then uh, Josiah is turning 13 next month. And then Hudson is 10. And our little girl, Ariana, is six years old. And so we are blessed. We're blessed. And so hopefully our house is still there when we get back this afternoon. Uh, but Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews chapter 10, starting at verse 19 this morning. Hebrews chapter 10, starting at verse 19. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. You may have something like that. You might be looking at uh, uh, New King James or NIV or NASB, all that kind of NLMNOPs. But uh, uh, whatever you have, let's, let's dig into God's word this morning. Hebrews chapter 10, starting at verse 19. And if you could, uh, would you stand for the reading of God's word this morning? Get the blood pumping through your legs for you got to listen to a long-winded evangelist. Hebrews chapter 10. Starting at verse 19, this is what the word of the Lord says on a beautiful, beautiful summer morning. This, this is, I love this stuff. Come on, I love this weather. Come on. Hebrews chapter 10, starting at verse 19 says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. Come on, somebody. I could, I could preach for an hour just right there. I mean, that's good enough, right? By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have such a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him, for our guilty conscience have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. So listen to this. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, I'm reading that one again because it's worth it. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Come on, somebody. 
Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another as especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Come on, let's pray. Father, one more time, would you release the power of your written word into our lives? Lord, in the mighty name of your son, Jesus, Lord, whether we are here in person, whether we're watching online somewhere, whatever it might be, God, I pray right now that we would know the presence of God in our life. Lord, more than ever before, I pray that we would, could come to you boldly, Lord, because you have made a path Lord, you have made a promise for us. Lord, I pray today that we would stand firm on the ground of Jesus Christ. Lord, I love you. Be glorified today in Jesus' name. Come on, and everybody said amen. 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 God bless you as you are seated this morning. I did forget, honey, I don't know. Pastor Ken, I, we have some prayer cards. We'll put them out. Honey, if you just want to throw them at him, he'll catch them. No, uh, but... Uh, we have these, we'll put them out at some point. We would love if you could be praying for us. Uh, we're we're kind of in this moment right now. I don't know if you, I mean, think about this, a traveling ministry, how does that work through COVID-19, right? So uh, things have changed a little bit for us. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're adapting and God has blessed us. I'm not here giving you a sob story. I'm not here to tell you, oh, you know, we're broke and, you know, my kids aren't eating, they need shoes or anything like that. She actually did throw them. I'm, that's an obedient wife. I'm so impressive, right? Uh, but uh, we're, we're blessed. But what I do understand is that we need the leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We need God to be going in front of us and making a way. And the, a lot of that happens through the prayers of, of friends and partners. So if you can just on, on your way out this morning, however your pastor will, will, will disseminate these, just make sure we'd love for you to be praying for us. And you can uh, follow along on our social media and all that kind of stuff to kind of try and keep up to date of what's happening in and around our lives. But here we are this morning. Uh, you know, uh, I, I'm so thankful thankful that Jesus has given us a path. He's made us pure. He has given us a promise. And it's all because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Now, I know a lot of times, it, 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 let's, let's be honest, for those of us that have been in church for a long time, you know, we, we're, we're kind of accustomed to hearing this, right? The blood of Jesus. Like, it, it almost, uh, I hate saying this because there's so many phrases now that I hate saying, you know, the, but we have normalized the blood of Jesus, you know, if you were to go out and, and talk to just some regular person that's walking along, along the street that doesn't know much about church life, doesn't know much about the Lord, has never read the Bible or anything like that, and you walk up to them and say, I plead the blood of Jesus upon you, you're about to get punched right in the throat, just so you know, you know? Uh, I, that, this is not a normal thing. This, this is well beyond what, what we can put together in our minds. And so I want us to come with this with a fresh perspective this morning. Uh, I, I want us to open up our eyes and not go, yeah, I know this stuff. I just, no, no. Let's, let's come to the Lord this morning and ask him to do something new inside of us like we've never seen before. Uh, you say, Tim, what am I saying? Hear me. If we always do what we've always done, we'll always be where we've always been. And if we, all, if we think we have it all together and we have all the nuts and bolts and we don't need any more and we're just here to teach everybody else, I got news for you. We are in a very, very shaky place. I need God more than ever before. The more I know, the more I know I need him. Amen. And so here in this portion of scripture this morning, I love how, how he has given us an all access pass into the presence of God. You know, many of us, as, as, as your pastor had mentioned, we, didn't, we weren't able to gather together corporately for some time. Some places were a little longer than others, shorter than others, and for a lot of different reasons and a lot of different things that are going on. And I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not going to talk about the politics of it and all the craziness and things that are going on in, in all that life. But what I can tell you is this. What I have learned is that many of us had become too dependent upon Sunday morning church for our spiritual life. And if we have learned anything through this pandemic is that we need to be able to approach Jesus while it's just me and Jesus. If you need your pastor to get to the Lord, I got news for you. One day you're gonna be standing before the Lord and he's not gonna be there with you. You're gonna have to answer for yourself. We have to have an understanding that we can go directly into the presence of God. And I, listen, I'm not saying, and because the end of our scripture talks about that we can't neglect our, our, our gathering together. This is obvious that we need one another. When we get to heaven, there's gonna be other people there. You know? 
I always kind of get a kick out of this. You know, sometimes pastor, somebody will tell me, they'll, you know, I'll, I'll go to a town, we'll be in a restaurant and we'll invite somebody to the church that we're having wherever and whatever's going on or whatever the circumstance is. And a lot of answers I get a lot of times is I don't want to go to that church because of the people that are in it, right? They're hypocrites. And while that is heartbreaking for sure, the other side of it is, who do you think is going to be in heaven? If you don't like being around God's people, heaven may not be the place for you. I'm just saying, you know? And so many of us need to get to this understanding that we can go directly into the presence of God, not because we don't need anybody else, but because Jesus has made a way where there seemed to be no way. He has given us an all-access pass. I'll, I'll explain it to you this way. My daughter, Emily, uh, a couple years ago has had, had to go through a couple different surgeries, uh, some, uh, some bone surgeries in her legs. Her feet were kind of turned out like that, and so they break things and push things and screws and plates and pins and rods and all kinds of fun stuff. And so uh, she's wonderful now, doing a, 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 having a great time. But, uh, you know, one of the years she had just had a surgery just before youth convention, right? How many have ever, how many have ever been to Hershey during youth convention? Anybody? All right. So, you know, like this is, this is for real, right? Like the, it is seven, 8,000 students gathered together in the giant center in, in Hershey, Pennsylvania. I mean, they are all over it. Many churches on the next day af after they have services, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday morning, they go, they, they go, uh, or they go to Hershey park on the next day. Right when when youth convention's done Friday night, they go to Hershey Park Saturday morning. So that's what our church was doing. And but Emily, you know, had just had surgery. She's in you know casts and everything. So she's been you know you know uh, the gipper most of the week, you know, and she's she's been you know crutching along. And so they get to Hershey Park. I don't know if you've ever been to Hershey Park, but for whatever reason, in the plains of southern Pennsylvania, you know, central Pennsylvania, there, Hershey Park is built on like hillsides. I don't know how that happened, but that's just the way it is. So when they walk in, the park officials say, hey, young lady, would you like a wheelchair for the day? And she's like, okay, great. You know, so somebody's pushing her around all day long. Now you say, Tim, what am I getting at? I don't know if you've ever been to an amusement park with someone in a wheelchair, but you don't got to wait in line no more. <laughs> Anywhere, any ride, as many times as you want. Like, I, like I, Emily, I mean, Emily calls and she goes, this is amazing, you know, like she got to ride. She was in the front seat on every ride that she could get on. And, and then finally, the other students started coming to our youth pastor and starting saying, hey, Pastor Kyle, can, can, we, can we borrow it for a little bit? It meaning Emily. So they could get to the front of the line. Hey, Tim, what am I getting at? You don't have to wait in line anymore. You have to wait your turn. You don't have to wait till everybody else gets blessed and hope there's some left over for you, right? You don't have to wait for the special song to be sung that in the right key. You don't need it to be the right decibel level. You don't have to wait for a key change in between verse three and verse four where everybody lifts their hands. Come on, somebody, let's be real. I know what we do as Christians. We all wait for the special moment, you're right? And sometimes yeah, I will even watch people, I, I, and I didn't see this happen this morning, that's what I'm gonna say. I'll watch people come, come forward for prayer in the morning and there'll be a couple different people praying there and they'll walk up and go, nope, don't want you to pray for me and go to right, you know, whoever the other person is, right? Because you think it has to be like the perfect circumstances for everything. You keep praying for my wife, she needs help because of me, but... God has given us an all access pass to live continually in his presence on a daily, regular basis. Come on. So I want us to understand this today, whether it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you can live in the presence of God. When you go into the doctor's office this week and you think you're about to get a horrible report, I want you to know you're not going in there alone. I want you to hear me today. When you stop at that gas station and you know you only got $5 left in your account and your tank takes 20, come on, I want you to know Jesus understands he's with you. He is our ever present help in time of need and you can call upon his name at any second of any day and he is there he sticks closer than even a brother does 
So how do we live in this all access pass into the presence of God? Hebrews says, and so dear brothers and sisters, let me stop right there. I love the fact that you can be at home in the presence of God. And so dear brothers and sisters, we are family. You can be at home. Some of you say, Tim, you don't, you don't, you wouldn't want my family around. Maybe you don't live in the perfect family. Maybe you don't have family. I got news for you. When you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that he is God at that very moment, you are now an heir and a joint heir with Jesus Christ, which means you are a part of the family of God. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. Listen, the reason we have an all-access pass into the presence of God is, number one, because Jesus made a path for us. He made a path for us. We have a pathway directly in to the presence of God. And I love the fact that the writer of Hebrews says, so we can enter boldly. Boldly. Listen, you're not some whip puppy. We, we, we got a, a dog for our kids, a little puppy dog for our kids uh, for Christmas time last year. And uh, she's a wonderful little dog. And you can kind of watch her around. As, as we noticed, we were shopping around where to buy the dog and all the kind of different things or where to get a dog. And, you know, we, we learned about puppy mills and all the different things and to learn, you know, learn whenever animals are taken care of and when they're not. And one of the telltale signs is this, is when an animal is not taken care of very well, when you start getting close to them, they start hunkering down. You know they've been beaten. A lot of people are like that. You've went through pain and heartache, disappointment. You feel like you've been left alone. You feel like a government's left you. Maybe a religious organization has left you. Maybe a, a, a husband or a wife or a family member. You felt like you've been left down. You lost your job. We, we get all these things because we've been dependent on all this. And all of a sudden, we've been beat down and beat down and beat down. And then God gives us an all-access pass into his presence. And whenever he starts getting close, we have been conditioned. And then we come into God's presence and we start kind of kicking around a little bit like, God, it'd kind of be nice, you know, if you would heal me. God, you know, I, I, I just can't take care of all these bills. I, I, God, I feel lonely. You know, and we, we, we become so, and I'm not saying not to be humble. Listen, there's a difference here. But what I'm telling you is that we have conditioned ourselves to act like we are a victim. You are not a victim anymore. No. That's not you. If you have confessed with your mouth and you believed in your heart that he is God, you are no longer a victim. You're a victor in the name of Jesus Christ. And you can boldly enter heaven's most holy place. He's given us a path when it doesn't make sense, when I didn't have what it takes. Listen, that's why the Bible says in my moment of weakness, that's where the strength of God is made perfect because I don't have what it takes. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be allowed into the presence of God, but it's because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ that he has made a way for me. Now here's where we start getting a little, why does it have to be blood? You know, why couldn't it have been, it could have been anything else, you know, like well, I couldn't have been like because of the gold of Jesus, you know, or because, you know, because of, uh, of the prime, prime steak or, you know, like it could have been, why does it have to be blood? You know, like could, couldn't, have, couldn't have been anything else. Could he have not purchased our pathway with anything else? I want you to think about this for a moment. And we've learned this very honestly over the last several months is that nobody's life Listen, there's not an amount of money in the world that's worth the life of my loved ones. There's not, there, there is nothing you could give me that's worth the life of my loved one. Blood is the highest price. The life of a person is in the blood. Do you understand, and, and Pastor Ken can tell you this for sure, you can stop breathing but still be alive. Why? Because there's enough oxygen left in your blood. 
That's why they actually have changed CPR now that there's, they don't even, they, there is no recommendation for anybody to blow into anybody else's mouth anymore because you barely excrete enough oxygen, let alone hope it gets down into their lungs. There's actually more oxygen left in somebody's blood. If you were just to do compressions until somebody can get there and, and establish an airway and put, or, and put actual oxygen in them, you just keep pumping. Just keep pumping, 100 beats a minute, right? That's all it is. Staying alive. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, staying alive. I'm just actually teaching you CPR right now. I'm actually, they're not making this up. He said that. I've never said that to him, but that's what they teach every CPR class. Am I lying? 100 beats a minute. That's how you know. So listen, what I'm telling you is this, is that blood is the highest price. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. But that's why God the Father sent his son into this world. Come on, somebody. For God so loved the world that he gave. What did he give? He gave his entire life for you, for me. He gave us an all-access pass into the presence of God. And I'm thankful today that when Jesus died on the cross, I want you to think about this for a moment. What day of the week did Jesus die? This isn't a trick question. Huh? Friday, quit that. He died on Friday. Jesus died on Friday. I want you to think about this for a moment. Jesus died on Friday. Why am I saying this? Because Friday started Passover. Hear me, 430 years, the, the Egyptians had the Israelites in, in slavery, in bondage. 430 years. You with me? 430 years. And, and then all of a sudden, God raises up a servant, right? God raises up Charlton Heston to go and talk to Pharaoh, I mean Moses, uh, several times, right? And Moses goes in and says, Pharaoh, you need to let the people of God go. Pharaoh says, no, right? So God starts sending plagues. He sends nine different plagues, all kinds of crazy things. Boils and hail and locusts. And I mean, the water turns to blood. Dark, it's dark. I mean, all kinds of crazy things are happening. And finally, Pharaoh wouldn't do anything. And Moses finally goes in. And God says, listen, what is going to happen now? The 10th and final plague, what will actually uh, make the, the Pharaoh allow the Israelites to leave is that the firstborn of every household in the nation of Egypt will die tonight. Unless you take the blood of a pure male lamb and you, you drain all, I mean, this is a gruesome thing. You can read all about this, Exodus chapter 12, Exodus chapter 13 and 14. That they were to go and get the, the blood of a male lamb and cut that male lamb open and allow all the blood to drain out. And then they went and got branches from a hyssop bush and tied them together and, and dipped it down in that blood and painted over the doorposts, over the top and the sides of the door. And at that night, when that, the spirit of death would come in, if he saw that blood of the lamb on, the, on that house, he would pass over that house. That's why it was called Passover. Passover, right? This will happen on Friday. And this is the same day that Jesus died, Friday. And I'm thankful today that what couldn't take place for 430 years, the Israelites were trying to be set free for 430 years. I'm thankful because of one night on the shed blood of the precious lamb, they were set free. Say, Tim, what am I telling you? Many of you, you've been dealing with heartache and pain, sickness and sin and addiction, separation, depression. You've been dealing with all the agony of this world. Maybe it's not 430 years, but maybe it's been weeks. Maybe it's been months. Maybe it's been years. I got news for you. One second of one day because of the shed blood. As the Israelites were set free after 430 years of oppression, you can be set free in one moment as you allow the blood of the lamb to be applied to the doorposts of your life. He gives us a path. He gives us a path. And what I'm thankful is that verse, uh, verse 20 says, by his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way. See, the old way, the priests would have to go in and they would have to sacrifice animals, right? They'd have to sacrifice goats and doves and pigeons and lambs and bulls and rams. They'd have to get all the different things. And it was only good for a year. It was only temporary. It's a temporary cleanse, a temporary cleanse. Yeah, but when Jesus died, nobody else 
Listen, nobody else needs to give their life for salvation. It was once and for all. Listen, it is called the finished work of the cross. You are, listen, the very second that you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart is the very second your name is pinned in the Lamb's book of life, giving you the right to spend eternity in heaven. You don't have to work yourself up for it. You don't have to make yourself to be any better than what you are. At that very moment, I got news for you. You are saved. Just as the Egyptians were... Uh, it's just as the Israelites were saved from the Egyptians, so you are saved from the slavery of this world. You have been made whole in Jesus' name. He's giving us a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. This is where I start getting a little more excited, if I'm not excited already through the curtain. See, the tabernacle, or, the, or at, that, at this point when Jesus is giving his life, if you were to go forward as Jesus is surrendering his life on Mount Calvary, there's a temple not, not too far off from the distance in Jerusalem there. And in the center of that temple was a room known as the Holy of Holies. It's in the center of that, that temple, that, that room called the Holy of Holies, where the, there was this golden box known as the Ark of the Covenant. There was the, the tablets that had the commandments on it, the Aaron's rod that had budded, and, and a pot full of manna that was inside that, that, inside that Ark of the Covenant. On the top of that Ark of the Covenant were these two angels, and their wings were stretched out over the top of it, these golden angels. And between those two angels were something known as the mercy seat of God. Once a year, the high priest to explain but at the end of the day he would go in with the pure blood of the lamb the purest lamb they could find and they would go in and take that blood and sprinkle it over top of that ark of the covenant in between those two angels known as the mercy seat of God and that what was that is what would allow uh, allow the, the people to be sanctified and cleansed for that year I'm thankful today listen what kept the commoner only the only the high priest was allowed in only the high priest him and him alone. But when Jesus, when Jesus declared with his last breath, it is finished, he meant it. He meant it. And just to prove that he meant it, come on. Uh, you, there was this huge, this huge curtain that kept the commoner out of the Holy of Holies. It was 30 feet long, 30 feet high, and almost eight inches wide. It was thick. And when Jesus, and he said, it is finished, the Bible says the earth began to shake, rattle, and roll. Come on, somebody. And that, that curtain tore in two, giving us direct access, giving Tim Bennett, giving you direct access into the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You no longer need some pasty uh, high priest to come in to show you how to live your life and tell you how to do everything. You don't need somebody to, to try and uh, make you something that you're not. All you've got to do is call upon the name that is above everything every name and it's at the sound of that name that every demon every angel every human being ever created their knee will bow and their tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord of all it's a new life giving way when Jesus died he gave he died to give life here's what I want to encourage you today We've gotta be very, very, very careful that what we do is not propagating death, but it's propagating life. Amen. In the midst of everything that's happening in this world right now, all the fear mongering and, and, and the manipulation that is happening, I don't care whatever side of the political aisle you sit on, it doesn't matter. Because Jesus is not a Republican, a Democrat, a conservative, a, a, a liberal. He's not a vegetarian, a gluten-free, anything like that. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and we ought to worship him as such. And many of us, what we have done is we've tried to manipulate other people. You know what I've learned? You will never argue one person into the kingdom of heaven. Never seen it once. Never seen anybody ever argue anybody into the kingdom of heaven. You say, Tim, what am I telling you? Here's what I'm telling you. You can spend a whole lot less time 
allowing the world to influence you and spend a whole lot more time into the presence of God. And you're gonna come to find out those few moments that you'll have when you are in the world will be way more impactful and impressive upon them because you are going to be going forward under the presence of God himself. Many of us just wanna share our opinion. I love you enough to tell you, I don't give a rip about your opinion because your opinion isn't gonna get me to heaven. It's only the eternal truth of God's word. Many of us would do ourselves a favor by keeping our mouths shut and our ears open to the voice of God. Listen, I, I'll give you some therapy. Next time you jump on social media and you wanna get on in somebody else's rant and type it out, but then just hit the delete button, it'll feel just as good. Because I don't need you hurting my testimony. Because they're gonna find out, oh, you went to Hamlet, Hamlet Assembly God? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Because the way you act and the way you treat people don't disqualify somebody. Listen, just because you don't want to minister to other people doesn't mean that somebody else in here don't want to minister to them. That's right. That's right. Amen. It's a new life-giving way. I need a bigger pulpit to hide behind. All right. It's a new life-giving way into the most holy of place. In verse 21, since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house. I love this. Let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Whew, that's good stuff. Say, Tim, what am I saying? Not only does God give us a direct path into his presence, but he gives us a purity to be in his presence. There is no one righteous. Not one. I've made, oh boy, oh boy. I make so many mistakes. Something, sometimes I do things I shouldn't do and I don't do some of the things I should. Some things, sometimes I say things I shouldn't say and I don't say the things I should say. Anybody else feel that way? Yeah, if your hand's not up, you're a liar. Get up here right now. He gives us a purity since we have such a great high priest. Remember I told you before, only the high priest was allowed into the Holy of Holies. Come on, just take, go, I gotta show you this. I don't have time, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Hebrews chapter four, just go back just real quick. Hebrews chapter four, this is so good. Hebrews chapter four, verse 14. I'll cut out some of my words to give you more God's words, that's better. Hebrews chapter four, verse 14 says, since, or so then, since we have a great high priest, uh-oh, see what's going on here? Since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses. See, the high priest then, they, uh, uh, the Israelites, the, the Levites, they, they, they lived differently than the rest of the Israelites. They, they lived separately. They, they, they were always, they were, they were kind of segregated aside. They, they, weren't, they didn't mingle among anybody else. They, they did their own thing. They didn't know the common life. They didn't know what it was like to walk up and down Main Street. But this high priest of ours says, this high priest of ours understands our weaknesses for he faced all the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of God, our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it the most. Jesus is our high priest. He is the one that ripped that to that veil in two. He is the one that gave us an all access pass. And when his blood was spilled upon this world, listen to me, this is why it is so important for us to, to just to believe in our heart, but also confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. When we do so, we are covered by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Because listen to me, not only is Jesus Christ the high priest, but he is also what is known as the lamb of God. John chapter one, John the Baptist is there along Riverside Assembly dunking people under the water like you're gonna do at the end of the month here, right? 
and, and he's dunking people. All of a sudden, here comes Jesus walking along, right? Remember, John, John the Baptist was, was, was a distant relative of Jesus, right? And he, he comes alongside it because he was, John the Baptist was inside his mom's belly, Elizabeth, while Jesus was inside his mom's belly, Mary. And whenever they got close to each other, the Bible says that, that inside of, 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 of Elizabeth's womb, John the Baptist jumped. Because the spirit that was inside John the Baptist and that little baby, that was also, he recognized, oh my, the son of God's in that, in that womb over there. That ought to prove to you that an unborn child has, mm. Can I just tell you something right now? Anytime I mention that, I always feel very, con I feel convicted in a hurry. Because I want you to know something. If you've been in that situation where you've, you've, you've made that decision or pressure, whatever it might have been, that you, you had had an abortion in your life, can I tell you something right now? That precious baby is in the arms of God. And I got news to you. The love and the grace of God is extended to you right here and right now. You are not far and distant. You are not disqualified from receive, receiving the love and grace of God. But Jesus is reaching his hands out to you right now. He loves you with an everlasting love. If he was done with you, you'd have been dead already. He loves you. You are not distant from the Lord today, but he is reaching out to you with an everlasting, do I believe abortion is the murder of an unborn child? You better believe it. But what I also believe is that the grace of God can reach out to that mother and that father, that family that made that decision right here, right now where you are. And that's not a political speech, that's a biblical speech. And I'll stand upon that hill any day. But he gives us a purity into the presence of God. It's wild to me that Jesus becomes our high priest, but that he's also the lamb of God that was slain before the foundations of this world. As, as John the Baptist sees Jesus coming, that same spirit he felt inside the womb, the womb of his mother is the same spirit that, that welled up inside of him. And here comes Jesus and John the Baptist says, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of this world. Isaiah said that Jesus was like the lamb as goes to, it uh, uh, keeps his mouth quiet as, he, as the lamb goes to the slaughter. So Jesus went to Mount Calvary for us. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastisement that brought us peace fell upon him and by his stripes we were healed. It's done, it's finished. It is the finished work of the cross. You don't have to make yourself up to be something that you're not. You come to Jesus just as you are and I can promise you that the blood of Jesus by the work of the Holy Spirit, he will begin, begin to create in you a brand new person. The old will be gone and the new will come in Jesus' name. That's why you can come with a sincere heart because here's the thing. The Bible says in the book of Psalms that when your sins are forgiven, he takes them and throws them as far as the east is from the west. This is peculiar to me. Sometimes we just read scripture and go, oh, that's good. Think about it for a minute. Think. I know we have, I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure, Pastor Ken, if you know him or not, a friend of mine named Austin Jones, he, he's a U.S. missionary in Alaska, Right? He's from the Pendel District. I'll introduce you at some point when he's around. Awesome, dude. You'd love him. Kills things. He's a better hunter than both of us. Uh, yeah, he's for real. He's from over in this area somewhere. I'll have to think about this. But listen, he lives in Alaska. But if you go to Alaska and you keep going north, right, then you get into the Arctic Circle, right? And you get up to the North Pole, right? You're going north all the way, right? But then once you pass the North Pole, what direction are you going? South. Okay. Let's start here in Hamlin. Let's start going east. Go through New York, go over to Pond, right? Through Europe, Asia, back around. Now you're into California. God touched them, you know? And then you keep, you keep coming, you get, you get through the Midwest, you go, oh, and you're back to Hamlin, you just keep going east. Once you get back to Hamlin and you keep going, you're going east the whole time, right? The only way that you can go west is if you stop and turn around. Notice the Bible doesn't say God takes your sins and throws them as far as the north is from the south. Because if, if, if once you go as far north as you can, then you start going south. And then once you get to the south pole, you start going north. But once you go east, you can never go west. The only way that you can ever go back to your own sin is if you stop and turn around. 
He takes our sin and throws them as far as the east is from the west. That's why I'm thankful today that God is understanding. He has walked in our shoes. He's experienced separation. He's experienced death. He's experienced temptation. He he has experienced the same things we have, but yet he did not sin. He lived a spotless, perfect life. He experienced rage. He experienced anger. He experienced all the things we we go through, all the emotions, all the things that we try and put excuses on. Listen, he went through all of it, yet he did not sin. He became sin who knew no sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. And he rules over God's house, verse 21 says. I don't. Pastor Ken doesn't. Governor Wolf doesn't. President Trump doesn't, the the World Health Organization doesn't. I got news for you, Jesus is the ruler. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and we ought to follow him. It is not not a demic, Tim, please be careful. Democracy is a good idea. I'm not so sure it's a God idea. I've never once in all of the Bible ever read where they took a vote in a church. But somehow in America, we think that's how it's supposed to be. If we don't like the pastor, we'll vote him out. If we don't like the way the worship is, we can change the channel. If we don't like this, and we don't like this, and it becomes all about us instead of all about him. I love you enough, and I'm leaving here this afternoon, so I feel like I can do it anyway. (laughs) Let's be careful we're not imposing our will, and let's follow his will. Let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty conscience have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean. It's a purity. You know what I love about this? Jesus died on Friday, which was start of Passover. Saturday was something known as the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Why? Because Saturday was the day that that the Israelites actually left Egypt. You know, they woke up the next morning. Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron in late Friday night. It was in the middle of the night, Exodus says, that he calls them in and says, get your bags and tell everybody to get out of here as soon as you can. So the next morning, the Israelites start packing their bags. They didn't have time to, to, to put the yeast in the bread. They, they left it all, so they, they got all of it and pushed it all aside. And, and, and we know now is what is leaven or yeast is oftentimes we associate as sin and things of this world that puff us up and make us something that we're not supposed to be. And the the Israelites left in a hurry. That's why it's called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And to this day, they still eat things like bitter herbs and they they eat unleavened bread. They eat bread without yeast in it to remind themselves that they needed to leave in a hurry. Can I tell you something? When Jesus saves you, leave the world in a hurry. Stop stop trying to negotiate with God. His his law, his, his word has not changed. The grass will wither and the flowers will fade, but the word of God stands forever and forever and forever. Many of us in our church culture, we have tried to make our, the Bible and the scripture, we've tried to manipulate it and make it a little bit more easier for the culture to digest, for the world to digest. Can I tell you something today? The world will never know who Jesus is unless we give them a clear picture of it. He is the word that it was become flesh that dwelt among us. And when we start changing the word, we are trying to change what Jesus looks like to this world. And G, listen, this world doesn't need our opinion of Jesus. They need Jesus alone. Let me finish. Oh, Jesus, help me. Verse 23, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do. Hmm. But encourage one another. Nobody wants to give an amen on that one anymore, Pastor. But encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Listen. Jesus gives us an all access pass in the presence of God. He gives us a pathway, he gives us purity, and he gives us a promise. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope that we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. What's his promise? He'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you. If you follow him here, you will live with him there. That's as simple as I can say it. 
Friday, Jesus dies, and the, as the Israelites are let go, uh, Saturday, uh, the Israelites leave Egypt, and this is the day that Jesus is in the tomb because the work has already been completed. It's just our turn to get up and move. But I love Sunday morning. Sunday was known as the Feast of First Fruits. The high priest would go out and cut down the first stalk and hold it up in the air and wave it, saying, thank you. This is the, first, this is the beginning of the harvest. That happened Sunday morning. What else happened Sunday morning? Jesus. Just about that time that high priest was out cutting that first stock down was the time Jesus decided to stretch out his legs. Right? Sit up out of that tomb. Take He starts running, and Jesus goes out of the tomb. Oh, pastor, bless me. Oh, God. Jesus comes out of that tomb. The same time the priest is saying, thank you for the first fruits, is the same time Jesus is getting out of the tomb. Say, Tim, what am I saying? Jesus was the first fruit of the resurrection. Just as the firstborn of Egypt had to die to, to let the Israelites out, is the firstborn of God the Father has died, but now Jesus has come giving us a new life-giving way, and he steps out of the tomb. Listen to me. I am thankful today that even though a virus may take my life, a sickness may take my life, a car accident may take my life. To be absent in this body is to be present with the Lord. And I'm thankful today they've yet to find the body of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because one day it's going to happen. One day, the same resurrection that Jesus experienced is the same resurrection. Those of us that are alive and remain will be caught up together in the cloud to meet those who have already went. Because they will, in a flash, it'll happen in a twinkling of an eye. Right? They'll come down out of heaven. They'll receive their brand new bodies. I'm not sure exactly what that looks like. I'd love to be in a cemetery when it's going on. Come on, somebody. Some of y'all would like to be over your neighbor's yard giving them one of them on the way up, you know? But in that last moment, that last second, when we're going, listen to me, Jesus was the, the first fruit of the resurrection. I've got news to you. This old body's gonna be made brand new. These love handles will be gone. Come on, somebody. Cancer will be defeated. Heart disease will be defeated. COVID-19 will be defeated. Depression will be defeated. It will all be done and over with. There'll be no more mourning. There'll be no more crying. There'll be no more pain. There'll be no more suffering. There will only be joy and joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's the promise we have. I would surmise this present suffering doesn't come close to the eternal glory of God. We get to join heaven forever and forever and forever. I'm thankful today that despite what we have to put up with here, it ain't even gonna matter. It's not even gonna matter. And I love, I love this. The first thing we're going to do when we get up there, it's the 17th tenet of the Assemblies of God. We're going to sit down and have a big potluck dinner known as the Marriage Supper of the Lamb. There's a lot of other things that go on. You can study for it yourself. I'm thankful today that we have a path, we have a purity, and we have a promise to live continually in the presence of God here on earth and in heaven. Today, I want to pray with you. I believe that it's not an accident that I'm here or that you're here. Not even close. God's a big enough God to figure stuff out. He knew exactly what you needed to hear when you needed to hear it. Some of you I've offended, good. If it's something I did that's wrong, you let me know and I'll try and apologize to it if I need to. Some of us need it encouraged. Some of us need it a little, let's go. But today, we've got to understand that it's no longer I that lives, but it's Jesus that lives in me. For I am crucified with Christ, and yet I live. Not I, but Jesus. In my spirit, it's the pure blood of the Lamb of God that's pumping through my spiritual heart. And if you're here today and say, Tim, you know what? I do not know Jesus as my savior. I'm far and distant from him. Or maybe you've been coming to church for, I don't know, whatever the circumstance might be. But right here, right now, you know who you are. 
Say, Tim, I need to make a decision to follow Jesus. I don't really need to explain that because you know what's happening in your heart. Right now, you are nervous. I tell you, that's the Holy Spirit saying, come on, and it's your flesh saying, stay. Trust God. This one time I told, I told the students in Sunday school class, the only way that you can ever follow God is by starting right now. Say yes, now. If you wait, it'll never happen. If you're here today and say, Tim, you know what? I need to make a decision to follow Jesus just before, just before I come this morning or pastor comes, I, I, I want you to get, make this opportunity. This is your moment right now. I'm not gonna ask anybody to bow their head. I'm not gonna ask anybody to close their eyes because there's moments for that, but I, this is not one of them. The Bible says in the book of Luke that when one sinner comes home, the angels of God rejoice. Amen. So if you're here today and say, Tim, you know what? I need to make a decision to follow Jesus. I'm gonna give you this opportunity right now. Nobody bow their head, nobody close their eyes, all right? This is, I, I, here's the deal. If, when hands go up, let's rejoice. We can sing a song that the angels can't sing. You understand that, that when we die and go to heaven, you do not become an angel. You become better than that. You become redeemed. <laughs> It's done. It's over with. Like they, You can sing a song the angels never can sing. So if you're here today and say, Tim, you know what? I need to make a decision to follow Jesus. I'm simply going to count to three. Every race starts with ready, set, go. We're going to pray a prayer and your pastor is going to come. This is your moment right now. You ready? This is it. This is for you. God, I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, that your Holy Spirit would draw each and every person, every barrier. Lord, whether it's been religion, whether it's been a relationship, whether it's been a, a, a something that has just been there that's kept us, it's been a long time. But God, just in an instant, just as you released the Israelites after 430 years of bondage, God, you can do it right now in this second. We trust you right now. I pray that, I pray that the blood of Jesus would be a applied to every doorpost of every heart right now in Jesus' name. Every head up, every eye open. If you're here this morning and say, Tim, I need to make a decision to follow Jesus. I'm simply gonna count to three. I'm gonna ask you to lift your hand right where you are. Your hand's not gonna save you, but we're gonna pray a prayer and Jesus will. Amen. Amen. This is for you. One, two, regardless of how old or young you are, you make this decision for yourself right now. This is for you. Yes, I'm talking to you. One, two, lift it high right now. Three, come on, is there anybody? We'll wait, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah, 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 that's awesome. Oh, come on, give God a big shout in this house. Oh, come on, this is worth more than that. How would you act if it was your son, your daughter, your mom, your dad? Oh, come on, give God a big shout in this house. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Now look. Everybody, you just want to go ahead and stand up. We're going to pray this prayer together. Listen, it's real clear. The Bible says we believe, but we also confess. It's an inward, inward belief, but it's an outward confession. Amen? It would be a really good opportunity for you to be water baptized at the end of the month. Everybody pray this prayer with me. You don't have to say this prayer word for word, but you do need to mean it, and you need to express it out loud. All right? Come on, everybody pray this prayer. Say, Jesus... Come on, everybody in the room. Say, Jesus. Jesus. If you're watching online, you can say it right with us. Come on, say, Jesus. Jesus. I believe that you are God. I confess you as the Lord of my life. Thank you, Jesus, that heaven is now my home. In Jesus' name, thank you for saving my soul. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a big shout of praise this morning. Praise God. This one on? Yeah, we're there. I don't know what to say. God is good. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, I thank you that you sent your son, that you gave your son, that you offered your son Jesus so that we could have the hope of eternal life. Jesus, I thank you that you cooperated in the plan, that you gave yourself, that you gave your life, that you died on the cross, Jesus, and you did say those words, it is finished. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, that you sent the Holy Spirit after you left, and the Holy Spirit is now here with us today. And for those that raised their hand and prayed that prayer, Holy Spirit, I know you're now living inside of them. 
And Lord, I just pray for, for those that are believers this morning, Lord, and, and we heard about the blood, Lord, and how it cleanses our sin. Lord, if there's anybody here today that's a believer, but they're struggling with sin, Lord, I pray that they would follow that pathway, that pathway of blood, Lord, and right now that they would say, Jesus, come into my life, Lord, and set me free from that thing that I've been dealing with. Lord, for those that need that word of encouragement, Lord, I pray that they would say, God, I receive that now, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would give us the peace that surpasses our understanding. And Lord, we just thank you. Lord, we thank you that you spoke to us today. Lord, we thank you that your word is true. Lord, we thank you that you are alive, Jesus. You didn't stay dead, but you rose again so that we can have hope of life. Lord, I just ask that you be with each one of us. And Lord, as, as we receive an offering, Lord, in a few minutes, I pray, Lord, that you would just continue to, to minister to our brother, Tim, Lord God, as he preaches your word, Lord, here today, but in, in other places. Lord, I pray you continue to, to offer him and his, his wife opportunities of ministry. Lord, I pray you provide for them, Lord, during these times and that you would just meet their needs as well as they have blessed us today. Lord, help us as we're able to bless them. And Lord, I pray that your blessing especially would be upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is good.